Here's a drawing I made a couple years ago, and as you can see, there's a lot wrong with this, but I'm gonna try to fix a couple of the mistakes here, and then uh, hopefully by learning from my mistakes, you can become better at your own art. Now the first thing I wanna look at is the sketch, and uh, as you can see, it's a very messy sketch. So recently, I've actually been making a lot of videos talking about how even when you're sketching, you should keep your line work clean, and I always see people leave comments like, I don't want to do that because I prefer the scratchy look. It's fine if that's what you prefer when you're working on an artwork, but when you're doing your practice sessions, that's a different story. When you're practicing, and this applies to anything, not just art, you have to make sure that your practice is perfect. You have to do things that you're not willing to do when you're actually working on an artwork, so that way you can get used to it so then eventually you'll be able to apply those things to your actual art. If you never practice your clean line work, you're never going to learn it. And the main reason why I want you to keep your line work clean is because it's going to make you better at controlling your lines. And the better you get at controlling your lines, the easier it's going to be to draw shapes like this mask, for example. This thing is uh, obviously supposed to be symmetrical, but as you can see, it's not. And the reason why it isn't is because my hand was unable to draw the shape correctly. And so no matter how many small lines I used to do this or how many broken up segments of lines I used to do this, it was never going to turn out right because my hand just didn't have the muscle memory to do it properly. That's the main reason why you should work on your line art. Up next, the thing I wanna look at is the viewpoint of the drawing. And I know I've explained this before, but let me just quickly go over it again. So the viewpoint is determined by the horizon line or eye level of the viewer, the person that's looking at the scene that we're trying to draw. So if you have an object that's shorter than it and an object that's taller than it, let's make that a tree. So if we then uh, make this scene three dimensional, we have our horizon line slash eye level. Then this box, because it's below the horizon line, is going to be seen from above that would be the top plane and then the tree because it's well partially taller than it the part that's shorter will be seen from above just like the box and then the part that's taller will be seen from below now my drawing the horizon line was meant to be somewhere up there and then the viewer would be looking down on her, so there would be a vanishing point all the way down there. We'd get three-point perspective. But, as you can see in the drawing, this does not really look like three-point perspective. We're not looking down on her here, we're looking straight at her. The way to fix this would be first to think about vanishing points. So, our horizon line is up there, and then all of your horizontal vanishing points are going to be somewhere on the horizon line. In this case, let's place one right there. And then we can connect the shoulders to that vanishing point. Then the other shoulder is probably going to be somewhere around there. And then we mark where the center is, probably around there. Now we can place the neck, going to be like that. And then we can place the shoulders with the rib cage, and that gives us a viewpoint from above something like that and then of course the closer you get to the horizon line the more the viewing angle will change to become uh, more of a head-on view instead of a view from above so we know there's a problem with the torso and um, actually one other thing we need to look at to fix that would be the spine but we'll get to that in a second before that let's take a look at the face the face looks extremely flat, and I know we're looking at this from the front, but even when you're looking at a face from the front, there are still features there that give it depth, and this face is lacking a lot of those features. If we look at the skull, I want you to pay attention to this area right here, the jawbone. There is a pretty big muscle that fills in this gap, it's called the masseter muscle, and it sits right underneath the cheekbone, and it runs all the way down to the angle of the jaw, which is back there. And uh, as you can see, it kind of fills out the silhouette. There's usually a bit of fat that sits on top of it as well, so it makes it even rounder. But if the eye was there on a uh, realistic person, hold on, let me just do that. 
On a realistic person, the eye would be right around there, and then you can see that the volume of the masseter still pushes the contour of the face out. On an anime character, it's slightly different. The eyes would be a bit bigger, so they'd probably be like someone like that. But then, the masseter muscle still exists, it still adds volume to the face, and if we look at my drawing, the eye is right around there, and then the masseter is non-existent. To fix this, we go down here, add that extra volume right there, and then we'd get a, uh, a more balanced looking face. Also, another thing, this face is extremely round, and if we look at our skull again, this is a lot more rectangular than it is round. So one way to fix this would be to straighten out some of these curved edges and then we place the ears somewhere around there. And then also the nose. People usually stylize the nose in a lot of different ways, but to do it properly you have to understand which part of the nose you're actually stylizing. A realistic nose would look somewhat like this and then up there we have the glabella, which is the area that the eyebrows are connected to. Then down here we have the tip of the nose, and then we have the nostrils. When you're stylizing the nose for anime, usually you only draw the tip of the nose like that. The way I did it in my drawing was that, which if we look at our nose from front view, it would be something like that. But that looks extremely similar to the nose we're seeing from side view. So a better way to do that would be to place one line there and then place the two lines for the nostrils. Then the last thing I want to look at is the spine. So the problem here is that the spine is actually over rotated. If we look at the spine, up here we have the cervical section, then we have the thoracic, and then down here the lumbar section. This is the sacral section at the bottom, but that doesn't really uh, help us because it can't rotate. So what's going to help us with this is spinal rotation. The thoracic portion of the spine can rotate around 40 degrees and then the lumbar section of the spine can rotate an additional 15 degrees. And before you leave a comment telling me that you just tried it in real life and you can actually rotate more than 55 degrees, you're probably rotating at the hips or you're even extending the spine and that's allowing you to rotate further. But if you're using purely spinal rotation, you're not going to get very far. In our drawing, the hips are going this way and then the torso is going that way. So in 2D, I think the hips are going that way and then it looks like the torso is going that way. So it's around 80 degrees of rotation, I'm assuming. Regardless of what the actual number is, you can see that if I split the image like this, it looks like both body parts are part of a completely different drawing. So I'm gonna do my redraw now and then we can look at how the drawing was fixed. And here's what I've got for the new version. As you can see, it looks very different. Ignoring the shading style for a second because I didn't feel like doing this uh, black shading again. The pose looks very different and there are two reasons for that. The first one is the viewpoint is different or the character is drawn according to the viewpoint I should say. Horizon lines up there and then the character is being seen from above. The second reason why the pose looks different is because to make the original pose work without over rotating the spine, I had to really make her stretch and rotate backwards. And if you've ever tried doing that in real life, you'll notice that your arms are automatically going to try and stretch in that same direction so that your shoulders can actually help you rotate a little bit further. So having one arm stretched like that and then the other one also pointing in the same direction, it's kind of a necessity to make the pose work, but also compositionally, it kind of follows the gesture because if you uh, look at her body, there's this C curve and then having the arms follow that as well, as well as this leg. In uh, the original drawing, you can see the leg is going that way. In this fixed drawing, I have the leg going that way, also following that C curve, so it makes it flow a little bit better. I also just now noticed that I forgot to add the coattails that she has. I was wondering why this area looked so empty, but uh, I guess I'll add them when I post this drawing later. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something from that, and let me know what else you want to see in the comments, and then I guess I'll catch you all later.